Hi, I'm Jason from Frank & Co, the UK distributor of high-tech sewing machines and cowboy sewing machines. Today we're going to have a look at the new Kinodai motor from Hitex, which I've got here. So this is a new motor from Hitex uh, that is very different from a lot of motors out there for applications in heavy leather sewing. We're going to have a look at a few differences today um, as to why to choose this, this motor uh, over other motors on the market. Um, it starts with the casting for the motor mount. As you can see here, we've got a generic one full of voids and using as little material as possible. Uh, whereas the high-tech motor, much more rigid, much more strong, and has a much better motor mounting point. Um, the finish on these is a lot better as well. And if you can't mount the, mount of, mount the motor properly, it doesn't matter how good the motor is, it's not gonna be effective. Um, and could lead to vibration um, and going out of time and out of sync. Um, so that's one of the main things they've started with there is the casting. Uh, moving on to the motor itself. So this is a traditional generic motor here. Uh, this is the spindle end that drives the, the intake fan. Um, and this is how a lot of motors are, but the Hitex design motor has a second encoder. So we have a needle positioner on the machine itself that's got an encoder built into it. And what that does, it stops any discrepancies between the motor and the needle positioner. When we're driving a lot of these larger balance wheel machines, um, they can often um, push and exceed the limits of a lot of cheaper encoders. So this just makes sure that the needle positioner and the encoder on the motor are always talking to each other. Um, Hitex have had their own board commissioned um, and have this special chip here, which allows communication between the two. Um, so they've gone to really every effort to make sure that leather workers are not going to be able to not get that extra stitch that sometimes comes with traditional uh, needle positions. So um, heavy work uh, and things that require a lot of torque can still be done uh, with stitch by stitch precision. So moving on now to the actual needle positioner itself. This is again a comparison of a generic needle positioner and, and a high tech needle positioner. You see on the generic one, we have a fixed encoder mount. Um, not a lot going on there in terms of um, uh, ability to control the machine and where it stops. We've got a plastic mount and this rather um, poor uh, machine link here, uh, all inside of this unit. Whereas the high tech one, uh, we've got a, a complete unit here, uh, but the, the machine itself has a double encoder wheel. So we can actually program a high spot and a low spot. If you want to do that, you can actually turn that. And you can see we've got two uh, encoder sensors in here. So um, a lot more going on there, a lot more control uh, for individual machines. Um, because a lot of older machines, they've got a lot more power and will trip something like this up. So Hitex has gone to the effort of having a double encoder wheel there, uh, which will allow you to have uh, all the control that you need. Um, speaking of control, we then move on to the uh, foot pedal attachment. So again, we've got a generic one here, and there's only one operation when moving up, uh, and not a lot of control in terms of uh, your spring back. So on some machines, when they go back, they'll spring back up, and they'll actually trigger that, meaning that you could get a thread trim, or you could get a reverse stitch, and your needle can move when you don't intend it to. Um, and if we look at the high text one here, we've got a controllable um, spring adjustment here, showing how high you need to heel back, so the operator can really decide um, how they like to work. And we've also got two distinct uh, operations. So, say you needed to raise the needle up and then trim. You've got needle raise and then trim as a second motion. So, there's two distinct feelings there. You can also adjust how much the, uh, the spring is needed to push down. And again, you've got the adjustment here to control that pin um, and a much nice, nicer mount. Uh, as well, so again, um, sheet steel mount as opposed to a plastic mount, so this can take a lot more uh, punishment in a, uh, in a factory or workshop. And now we can have a look at how the motor will come to you. So here it is, all boxed up. Um, we're showing you the HM750 SL. Um, so that is the standard configuration. The 750 ST is for pneumatic and um, operated uh, things on the machine, things like trimmers, uh, reverse um, and uh, pullers uh, and whatnot. Uh, this is the 110 version, so for the US market, also available in 200 to 240 volt for UK and uh, Europe. Um, it's got a few other bits of information on there, but let's get inside the box. First thing we see is the instruction manual. So this is a really nice instruction manual. High techs have gone to every effort to make sure that the machine 
um, you can fit this to the machine. Um, a lot of places don't even have uh, a manual, so one that goes into such detail is a real treat, um, giving all sorts of different parameters and how to program the machine and lots of different um, information there so that you make sure that you can program this directly for your machine. Uh, if you look inside, we've got the pit and rod as standard, uh, we have the encoder, we've got the uh, pedal control, we've also got the mains adapter, um, so your local dealer uh, or your local importer will change this uh, to fit your country. This is fitted with Chinese standards. Um, if in the UK, it's a 13 amp um, uh, plug. We've got our different fixings and other bits and pieces. And then underneath, we have our motor and our control box uh, all tucked in there nicely. So uh, this is how, uh, if you order just the motor, this is how it will arrive to you, uh, ready to be installed. And if you follow me upstairs, we're going to show you the benefits of the motor in action. So now we're going to look at the motor on the machine. Uh, we've got it here on the CP4500, uh, which is a leather working model for salary uh, and other, other leather working. Um, I've got some veg tan leather here. I've got four layers of four millimeters, so we've got 16 millimeters of leather. Uh, normally, a machine to go this slow um, okay, with this thick fabric, we need a reduction gear. What we're going to show today that that's no longer the case. Um, and uh, we're just going to pop that under the foot, under here. So nice and slowly. And my foot is right down. So we're using the speed control that's built into the machine to slow it, to so as slow as possible. Um, as I say, normally this would be done by a reduction gear to maintain the torque, but the, um, the new Hitex motor, the HM750XL, no longer requires a reduction gear to go slow and maintain the power. So we've got complete control over here. We can use the needle position if we want to, um, but in leather working, uh, you tend to uh, feed it into the last few stitches by hand um, because you need to get that stitch by stitch perfection. So you can still do that on this machine. There's no requirement to use the needle position if not need to. And again, my foot is right flat on the ground here. Uh, this is the fastest we go through our programming. If you wanted to go faster, it's very simple to uh, to increase that speed. We've got a lot of people, especially beginners or people transitioning from hand sewing or perhaps using our um, hand operated machine in the outdoor, they like to, to go very, very, very slow so they can maintain the most of our control. You can see that's sewing there. Absolutely no problem. So now let's look at how slow the motor is able to go. Um, we put the motor onto the Hitex 7205-370, uh, another cylinder arm machine for leather working. Um, and we've got some quite thin um, uh, upholstery leather here. We're going to do four layers of that. Uh, we're going to put the presser foot up and we're going to sew. So as you can see, when we sew, so as slow as possibly can. This is done just through most for alone. Normally you need a reduction gear uh, to get anywhere close to these sorts of slow speeds. And my foot is right down on the foot control. So if you need uh, precision or perhaps you're a beginner or you're training somebody, uh, this will allow you to go incredibly slow without the fear of the machine running away from you. Uh, especially with leather, um, that extra stitch can ruin the work entirely. So we're gonna slow, 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 slow sewing along there nicely and as we come to the end we can go in and reverse the machine will actually reverse in the same holes that it went through originally so this is the accuracy of this machine and we're going to come down and then sew forward again so a little bit slow And you turn that fan swirl up by hand. As you can see, we've got that flexion both front and back. And that's reversed into the same hole each time, allowing us to finish off the stitch.